And I'm no longer a slave to fear And I am a child of God And I'm no longer a slave to fear And I am a child of God Unravel me with the melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. And I'm no longer. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God.
welcome to Element Church Online. We are so thrilled that you're here with us today. Before we get started, would you do us a big favor and share this video? That would help us out big time. Wherever you're at today, whether you're in your living room, whether you're out on a trail listening to this, or maybe even out on the pontoon, we hope that you enjoy this message. Hey everybody, welcome to Element Church. We are so glad you are here with us today. And as always, as you come in the room, could you hit the heart and let us know you're here or give us the wow face. Let us know you're here. It's sort of our virtual high five to you as you walk into the room. We're so glad that you are joining with us for Element Church Online. And as always, our hope is that you would take next steps and first steps towards Jesus. In other words, we hope that for some of you, this will be the day that you give your life completely to God, that you will completely surrender your life to Jesus and you'll begin to follow him as a disciple. And for some of us, that uh, today will be a day of next steps. It'll be a day of growing in your relationship with God, getting closer to him. James 4, 8 says, we draw near to God. He draw nearest to us. And so today will be a day of drawing near for you. So we're excited about that. Hey, could you do us a favor? Could you hit the invite? There's an invite button if you're watching on Church Online platform. An invite button. Invite some of your friends into the room. There's also a share button if you're looking on Facebook or YouTube. Could you hit that for us so that we could get more people in the room so we could invite the gospel into more people's lives? Could you also like and comment below? What that does is it puts us in your algorithm so that more people can hear about the gospel of Jesus. So if you do that, we would we would love that. That would be so awesome. Hey, today is going to be sort of more of a teaching day. It's, it's going to be fun. I think we're all going to learn a little bit. And uh, we're all going to be encouraged by what God has to share with us today. If you don't know it, today is the seventh Sunday after Easter Sunday. And so today marks the day that the Holy Spirit came down to the disciples. And that day is called Pentecost. And we're going to talk about Pentecost Sunday. So today is Pentecost Sunday. We're going to be talking about what that is, um, and why is that significant? There's be two questions. What is Pentecost, and why is that significant? And uh, also, we're going to give you a big idea. What is the big idea? What is the big takeaway from today? Then, we're going to have some uh, discussion questions that we're going to leave at the end. So, if you're gathering with people in a room, or you're gathering in a small group, we're so glad that you guys are huddling up. This is great. Uh, there'll be some questions you can talk about, some talking points that you guys can discuss, and uh, you can pray for one another. And lastly... We're going to take communion uh, today. It's been a long time. I don't know about you guys, but I miss taking communion. You know, um, we used to say this all the time, and it's still true that Element Church, we took communion every Sunday because we never wanted to forget about the goodness of God and the sacrifice of Jesus that bought us back out of the kingdom of darkness and put us in the kingdom of his son. So today we're having communion, and I don't know about you, but if you would like communion every Sunday, hit the like button, let us know, hit the heart button. And uh, you know what? We, we, we probably just need to do that anyway, even if you hit it, the like button or not. We're, we just need to do it anyway. So here we go. Are you ready? If you got a Bible, you can use a Bible app. If you have a phone, you can use that. Uh, if you got a hardcover Bible, you can use that as well. We're going to be in Acts chapter 2. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, right? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Uh, Acts. Uh, so Acts is right after the Gospels. And so we're going to talk about Pentecost Sunday, Pentecost Sunday. So what is, here's our first question. What does Pentecost mean? What does this mean? This is such a goofy word, right? And uh, obviously some of us are familiar with it because maybe you grew up in church. Some of us, maybe not. Maybe this is the first time you've ever heard the word Pentecost. Sometimes we reference that to a certain type of church, but Pentecost means 50 or 50th. And what it, what, what it actually gets its origins from is Levitic, Leviticus 23. Excuse me. We're not going to go there. But Leviticus 23, and, and where it comes from is this festival, this Feast of Weeks, it was called, where the Jewish people would get together and they would bring uh, drink offerings and burnt offerings uh, for sin offerings and, and for peace offerings to the Lord. And so the Hebrew word here, and I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to butcher it, so I'm just going to tell you straight up. I'm not Jewish, okay? I'm going to butcher this word, but it's uh, Shavuot. And so, um, and, and it's pronounced a couple of different ways, but the Feast of Weeks, people would, from all over, the, all over the nations would gather together and the Jewish people would gather together and they would read the Ten Commandments. They would also study the Torah all night. And uh, they would, again, like I said before, they would bring drink offerings and food offerings for sin and peace. And so they'd also do wave offerings like grain offerings. And so you can read about that in Leviticus 23. It's sort of where it gets its origins from. And then the, the, the Greek word or the Greek holiday is called Pentecost, which means 
50th. It marks 50 days after the Passover, after Easter, okay? So we're the seventh week, okay? So 50 days after that, and that's where we end up today. And when we look at Acts 2, okay, what we're seeing is we're seeing the Feast of Weeks. We're seeing Pentecost. Every tribe, every nation, they're all coming to Jerusalem to celebrate Pentecost. And, and, and I just want to make a quick little note about some significance that I see about what God has sort of done in setting up and propping up Jesus and the gospel message. Jesus is crucified. He, ri he rises three days later on Easter Sunday and deliberately hangs out. This is so cool. Deliberately hangs out for nearly a month. Okay. He visits his disciples. If you got a Bible, you can go to, uh, you can go to Acts chapter one. You can see where he's, he's there talking to his disciples. He tells them, right? He tells them to wait on the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to go there. If you want to go there, go get your Bible and go to Acts chapter one. I'm using my phone. I like to use the YouVersion app. It's sort of, uh, it's nice. It's very easy to use, but Acts chapter one and Luke is saying here, and in verse four, it says, and while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the father, which he said, you hurt for me for John baptized you with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy spirit. Okay. It's all about the Holy spirit today. Not many days from now, you, you might, you might remember, uh, back in 2018, we did a whole series. We did about four weeks, five weeks on the Holy spirit. We called it untapped. And one of the things we said is that the Holy spirit is not a what it's a who the Holy spirit is the third member of the Trinity. Um, and so, and, and I, I don't know, maybe we need to revisit that. I'm thinking maybe we need to revisit that as I'm sitting here. I'm wondering, maybe it's been too long. We need to revisit what it means to be engaged with and empowered and walking by the Spirit of God. Now, the Holy Spirit isn't something to be scared of. The Holy Spirit, third member of the Trinity, is something that we are gifted with, and we're going to see that here in uh, in a minute. But it says that in, in verse 6, Acts 1, verse 6, it says, So when they had come together, they asked the Lord, Will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? And he said to them, listen, he said, It's not for you to know the time or the seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power. Look at the person next to you and say, Power! <laughs> You'll receive power when, when he says, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses. So he says, you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and the Holy Spirit will empower you to be my witnesses. Where he said in Jerusalem, that's where they are in Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So basically everywhere. My point is this, is that God fixed all this time. Jesus resurrects on that Sunday and seven weeks later, there's Passover where he strategically knew that tons of people would be in the city. And that's where the disciples are. That's where they are. And that's where we want to pick up on it. Because the second question is this, is why is Pentecost significant? Why is this day so significant? Why does it bear um, time to talk about? And why is it on our calendars? Why is it the talk of the Christian community? And so let's, let's answer that. And there's tons of answers. We're only going to hit on a few, but I want to tell you that in Acts one, right? Jesus is telling them, you need to wait here, right? For the power of the Holy spirit to come on you. Okay. And then he ascends. Now they're there after he ascends, they're there about 10 days and they're praying up in an upper room. All right. And then it gets to Acts 2, verse 1 through 4. And this is when the Holy Spirit falls. This is when the Holy Spirit is given to the disciples. And let, let's just read it. Acts 2, 1 through 4. Here we go. Ready? It says, When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house. Wow. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting and divided tongues as a fire appeared on them and uh, rested on each of them. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, let me give some, some clarification because if you've been around church people or you've got the internet, <laughs> you've probably heard of a Christian speaking in tongues, right? And being baptized with the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. 
And, and what people mean by that is that that's a heavenly language that cannot be interpreted with our ears. It's not a known language. That's not what is being said here. I just, I, I want to clarify this because I think so many times we have lived our life not really gaining a lot of clarity and a lot of wisdom, uh, not getting our teaching corrected. And this goes for me too. Uh, we're all growing in our faith. We're all working at our faith with fear and trembling. But we need to realize that what happened here was not the gift of tongues, right? The, the, the gift of the heavenly utterance that cannot, you know, your mind doesn't even know what you're saying. But it was actually uh, known languages. It was known languages. Now, the clarification is that the disciples did not start speaking an unknown language. But what happens when the Holy Spirit fell on them, they began to speak in known languages languages, a variety of them. So if you look in Acts 2, we just read 1 through 4. Look in verse 6. It says, the people were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. So let me let me just give you an illustration of what this might have been like. They're all there. They're all praying. They're all waiting on the Holy Spirit because Jesus told them to wait. The Holy Spirit descends on them, okay, the room just gets really windy, right? There's there's tongues of, the, uh, of, of fire that, that, that rest on them, you know? And then all of a sudden, they begin to speak different dialects, French and, and different dialects of the people that are there. Now, think about this. There's 120 people up in this room. So possibly 120 dialects are being spoken. And at this time, it is Pentecost. It is the Feast of Weeks. And... People from every nation, tribe, and tongue are coming into Jerusalem, and God methodically plans this out. Tell me how awesome this is. He methodically plans this out to make sure that the gospel goes viral. He plans it out for this day so that all these people could hear the wonders of God in their own language from people that they knew didn't speak it. Isn't that amazing? I, I don't know. I still love that. So anyway, that's what we're talking about. Pentecost Sunday is when the Holy Spirit drops down and then fills and dwells in the people of God. Why is this significant? Why is Pentecost significant? Here's one reason why Pentecost is significant. It's because Jesus makes good on a promise that he gives us in John 14, 15 through 17. Now, if you got a Bible, get your Bible. Go to John. If you're in, uh, if you're in this... Uh, um, Bible app, you just go to John and then go to John 14 and then look in verse 15. So just scroll down, go to verse 15 and listen, Jesus promises us the Holy Spirit. He's now, this is before Jesus has been crucified. He's still living and walking and ministering with his disciples, but he's coming to the end of his life. And he is again, telling his disciples, this is what's going to happen. And this is what I love about God is he is always trying to keep us in view, right? Jesus is always trying to keep him, his disciples in view. Like, listen, I'm trying to tell you what's going to happen. Be prepared. Okay. So he tells them in verse 15, if you love me, you will keep my commandments and I will ask the father and he will give you another helper. And I believe the Greek word or, or the, the, yeah, the Greek word for a helper here is, is a parakletos. All right. And Correct me if I'm wrong. I, 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 I'm pretty sure that's right. Um, but the original language here is parakletos. It's, it's an advocate. It's, it's one of the same. Okay. So it says, I will give you another helper to be with you when? Forever. Isn't that amazing? And he clarifies, even the spirit, and spirit is capitalized, even the spirit of truth with whom the world can't receive, and we're going to get to that, the world can't receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him. For he dwells with you and will be in you. Hello. He dwells with you and he will be in you. So Jesus makes good on a promise that he already had told his disciples. The reason this is significant is because it reminds us that God had a plan. <laughs> it reminds us that God had a plan and Jesus knew about the plan. He was part of the plan before he ever went to the cross. And that is significant because that means that God, God had no plan to leave us as orphans. He had no plan to just have Jesus go away and us just be looking at each other like, well, what do we do now? Look, if you even look, if you even look in John 14, 18, so we're in John 17, we ended there looking for the very next verse. He says, you know him for he dwells with you and in you. And he says in verse 18, I will not leave you as orphans. 
He says, I will come to you. Well, how does he come to us? Through the power and the presence of the third member of the Trinity named the Holy Spirit. Again, the Holy Spirit is not a what, it's a who. It's a who. The Holy Spirit is not a mystical, make-believe thing. The Holy Spirit is just as real as Jesus and God the Father. So, why is Pentecost significant? That is that that there's a uh, there's a reason right there that God makes good on His promises, and I think that's I think that's important for some of you to hear because you have been hurt and broken over people hurting and breaking promises. Come on. We've all had promises broken to us. We've all had somebody tell us something and maybe even devote their allegiance to us through marriage or through a relationship or just through a commitment and they've broken that. And that has made us really skittish about promises that people make to us. Let me tell you something. God does not break his promises. And if that's you today, if if you're listening to this, I'm going to encourage you to give God a chance. Don't let the wounds of the past taint the, the, the hope for the for your future. Don't, don't let the wounds and the broken promises of the past sort of curb you so that you never trust anyone and, and don't let it curb you so much that you never trust God. All right. He never breaks his promises. He never breaks his promises. All right. Another reason that Pentecost is significant to, uh, and, and why we should be talking about it is without the promise of the, uh, the promised Holy Spirit in our life, without the Holy Spirit in our lives, it, we would be ill-equipped to follow Jesus effectively. Think about this for a moment. God works both in us and through us by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's how he works in us and through us. In Philippians, it says, working out our salvation. We talked about this earlier with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you and through you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. How is God to work in us and through us? Through the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit that dwells in us. That's how he does it. That's how he does it. It's because he's here. He's not, I mean, yes, he's present, but he is present. Amen? So why is Pentecost significant? Why is the giving of the Holy Spirit significant? Why why should we care about this? It's because without the indwelling third person of the Trinity in our lives, we would be ill-equipped to be used by God and to follow Jesus effectively. Here's another one. Without the promised Holy Spirit in our lives, we would be uh, uh, we would be void of our ability to witness to the power of God. In other words, when when we read, go if you got your Bible, if you got your app, go back to Acts. Okay, you're in John. Go back to Acts. It's just go to Acts chapter one again. I want to read this to you again. You remember what Jesus said in Acts chapter one in verse eight. But you will see power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. For what? And you will be my witnesses. It's going to be impossible for us to witness and and, and be a witness of the gospel without the power of God in us. Without the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit, um, there would be a void in our ability. And that's the key word, our ability to witness to the power of God. Now look, the Holy Spirit is the living witness of the resurrection of Jesus. It's the living witness of the resurrection of Jesus. That's why when you go back to John, I'm getting you guys to flip around in your Bibles. Get your thing, go back to John for me. Go back to John 14. Go back to John 14. Scroll all the way down to like 15, 16, uh, 17. Look, it says, he says in 16, John 14, 16, okay? John 14, 16, and I will ask the Father, Jesus is saying, I will ask the Father now, and, and, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the spirit of truth with whom the world can't receive. The world can't receive. Why can't the world receive it? And we're going to get into this. Why can't the world receive it? He says, because they, eat, they, they neither see him nor know him. The Holy Spirit it's what the believer gets. It's, it's, it, it, it's, the, it's the gift of the presence and power of God to the believer. So those who put their faith and trust in Christ, those who begin to follow Jesus, they confess him as Lord and Savior. At that moment, they are empowered with the, with the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead now dwells in them. It is the, it is the acknowledgement of the resurrected Christ. It is that power, that presence that we feel, that we know, that we're comforted by, that again reminds us that Jesus is alive. That Jesus is alive. 
So without the Holy Spirit, we would have a we, we would be void of an ability to witness to the power of God. And in, in Romans 8, 10 through 11, if you've got a Bible, you can read this. Romans 8, 10 through 11. It says, but if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. We experience life in this mortal body through the spirit of God that is in the believer. The, the, the Holy Spirit, it, it is welcomed into our life when we accept by faith and grace the gift of the Son, the gift of of forgiveness of sins, the gift of the resurrection, the gift of the cross. When we believe and receive the gift of salvation through Jesus, at that moment we are born again and the Holy Spirit resides in us. It gives life to our mortal bodies. Isn't that amazing? Why is Pentecost significant? There's, there's another one. Here's another one. Why is Pentecost significant. Well, without the Holy Spirit in our lives, it would be difficult to sense God's nearness to us. You probably hear us say this a lot, is that God is always present. He never leaves us. He never forsakes us. And sometimes, sometimes people that do not follow Jesus, that is a very hard thing for them to accept. And I get it. I will be honest with you, there are times in my own life, even though I am born again and I have the presence and power of the Holy Spirit in my life, dwelling in this mortal flesh, there are times in my life where I forget how close He is. But I will tell you as a believer, as somebody who's been following Jesus, now I didn't, I didn't always follow Jesus. I didn't. I know, hard to believe, right? No, I didn't always follow Jesus. And you know what I struggled with the most when I didn't follow Jesus? Loneliness depression. Now, I'm not saying I never struggled with that again, but man, there was a void in my life that, that when I, when I started following God and the Holy Spirit resided in my, my life, that void became a lot less. I mean, even in this room, even in this room, I, I really sense his presence because his presence is alive in me, alive in me. Without the Holy Spirit in our lives, it would be difficult to sense God's nearness. Jesus said this in John 14, 19 through 20. He says, in that day, you will know that I am in the Father and you in me and I in you. I, I, I would say this all the time is that, you know, it used to be in the Old Testament that God would be out there, right? God's out there and he's, he's leading by a cloud or a pillar of fire and he's leading through a burning bush, but he's out there, right? And then Jesus comes on the scene. The Messiah is born in Bethlehem. I'm reading through the Gospels. By the way, if you want a great resource, I'll try to link that below, but reading through the Gospels in a month is really, really is such a blessing. But the Messiah is born and his name is Emmanuel, right? God with us. So now it's no more that God is God is out here in the air, far away from him. Now he is with us. It's like he's, and he was. Jesus, he he ate and he drank and he slept and he, he did life with, with people. And then when Jesus was crucified and raised from the dead and ascended, he left us the Holy Spirit, which now is not God there, right? Out there, not God with us, with us, Emmanuel, but now it's God in us. Isn't it interesting? And I say this all the time and I know you hear it, but the, the sort of transition from God out here to now God in me, man. I mean, you can't convince me that God doesn't love us. You can't convince me that God doesn't want us to draw near to him. He's done all the heavy lifting for us. And he's, he's constantly, he was constantly making his way and his progression to your life. So the Holy Spirit with the Holy Spirit, or excuse me, without the Holy Spirit, it would be very difficult to sense God's nearness. Without the Holy Spirit in our lives, we'd be, we'd be lacking a lot of courage and strength to stand in the face of adversity, in the face of persecution. Without that presence of God in us, it would be very difficult 
to continue to stand. Here's another reason that Pentecost is significant. Pentecost marks the birth of the church, the Big C Church, and in where the church that we know, the church global. It marks that the Holy Spirit comes and he fills the 120. They begin to speak and proclaim the gospel in known languages while Jerusalem is filling up with people of all types of languages and thousands come to the Lord. Thousands hear the good news of Jesus and thousands give their life to following Christ. Now, you might not think that's a big deal, but you got to realize that it was only 50 days, 50 something days ago, a little over a month and a half, Jesus was crucified as a criminal and nobody wanted to attach themselves to him. But what's interesting is after his resurrection, he hung out for like 40 days. He hung out and, and ate with people and talked about the kingdom. And now this great rush of wind happens and people hear this stuff going on and and then they hear all these, all these Galileans, all these people who are voicing out the proclamation of the gospel in their own language. And people just go, what? And they flock. They flock to the church. And the church explodes. After Pentecost, the church begins to grow and people's lives begin to change on a macro level, on a macro. People's lives begin to change just exponentially. I mean, life is happening. I mean, if you get, if you got your Bible again, go to Acts. I didn't have this in here. Go to Acts 2, okay? And then scroll all the way down. Scroll all the way down to like 40 something, okay? I'm going to show you all the way down to 40 something. Well, here, check this out. All the way down to 40, verse 40, Acts 2, verse 40. And with many other words, he bore witness now they're preaching and proclaiming the gospel and continue to exhort them saying, save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who received his word were baptized. Come on now. Hey, are, are you needing next steps? Do you need to get baptized? They were baptized and they, they were, uh, there were added that day about 3,000 souls, 3,000 people that day, the day that Pentecost happened, the day that they began to proclaim the goodness of God in these different dialects and, and, and 3000 people came to the Lord. That is amazing. That is amazing. The Holy spirit falls. They begin to proclaim the gospel in all these different languages. Peter goes out and this is it. And you can read this, read this acts two, uh, verse 11, go all the way to the end of the end of the uh, chapter. Peter steps out and he begins to preach. This is the same Peter who, who denied Christ. You tell me he ain't got the power of the Holy Ghost right now. He begins to preach and people hear it and they're baptized. They believe it's 3,000 people. Isn't that amazing? It's amazing. So like Easter, Pentecost should be a common conversation in our tribe. Pentecost should be a common discussion. And, and, and listen, I, I'm going to admit something. I don't think I've ever preached a Pentecost Sunday message to you guys, ever. And so, a uh, little convicted about that. So anyway, but, but this should be normal for us. We should celebrate Easter, Christmas, Pentecost. We should because Pentecost, without the Holy Spirit in our lives, man, we are lost. Think about this for a moment. Think about this. Think about it while I take a sip. <laughs> think, think about this for a moment. Jesus ascends and that's it. There's, I mean... The whole reason you feel God near is because you have the Holy Spirit in you. I mean, think about that. Jesus just ascends and he's like, well, see you when I see you. I mean, we would be grateful, yes, for the cross. Grateful, yes, for what he's done. Absolutely. Salvation, yes. And had he not given us the Holy Spirit, man, I would still be grateful for salvation. I would still be grateful for that. But, but now, that I've, now that I've experienced life, apart from God and with God, apart from the Holy Ghost and with the Holy Ghost, I, dude, I cannot do my life without the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. I just can't. I just can't. So those were our two questions. Here's the big idea I want to share with you. The big idea is very simple and it's living and walking your life out by faith. We've been talking about faith, Hebrews 11. Living and walking out your life by faith means that you will need and depend on. Need, you will need it and depend on the presence and power 
of the Holy Spirit. If you're going to walk out your life by faith, if you're going to take everything that we've been talking about, about faith and living by faith and walking by faith, if you're going to do that, you will need and you will have to depend on the presence and power of the Holy Spirit in your life. Trying to walk out your life in faith without the Holy Spirit without acknowledging the Holy Spirit, without learning about the Holy Spirit, without tapping into the power, the resurrection power in your life is much like what happened to me this week when I tried to get in my truck and go somewhere and realize I'd left my lights on and my battery was dead. Trying to live our life apart from the third member of the Trinity, trying to live our life without listening Obeying and walking in the Spirit of God is like trying to drive a car with a full tank of gas with no battery. With no battery. You're not going to get anywhere. Yeah, is it a car? Yes. I mean, does it have an engine? Yes. Does it have wheels? Yes. Does it have potential? Yes. But let me tell you something. If you do not lean in to the power and the presence of the third member of the church, to the, to the very Spirit that raised Christ from the dead that is alive in every believer, if you're not going to lean into that, you're going to find your life is lacking a lot of momentum. What happens in our lives is we think we can come to Jesus and commit our lives to him, and then that's the end. We, we really think that we come and we say, okay, God, I want to follow you. Thank you for saving me. Hallelujah. And then that's it. We think that's it. And then the rest of the time here on earth is just waiting for the clock to run out so that we can go to heaven. But what you don't realize is as soon as you come to Christ, as soon as you give your life to Jesus, that is not the end. It, yeah, you know what? It is. It is the end of the old you, but it is the beginning of the new you. <laughs> it, is the, it is the end to the person who walked in darkness and sat in darkness, and it is the beginning of the person who walks and lives in light. Some Christians will go their whole lives not realizing that they possess the very power and presence of God in their lives. Can you imagine that? Going your whole life and your greatest hope after giving your life to Christ is dying and going to heaven. Man, that sounds depressing. Is that just me? That sounds depressing to me. When we don't realize that God's power and presence lives in us, we go about our lives just waiting to die instead of, instead of living this life on earth to the ultimate fullness. Do you remember what Jesus said? He goes, I've come to give you life and to give it to you more abundantly. How does he do that? Through the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. So many of us, unfortunately, we come to God, we, we, we confess, his, confess Him as Lord, we're, we receive salvation by grace through faith, we, 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 we receive it, we're born again, and yet we, we have the Holy Spirit, but we, we never tap into this, we never lean into it. We never listen to the Holy Spirit, we never learn about the Holy Spirit. And some of us, man, you have been taught some really whacked out things about the Holy Spirit. Let's just be honest. If you're listening right now and you've, you've, ta- you've been taught some whacked out things and you know what, I'm, you know what those are about the Holy Spirit that weren't biblical, uh, go on and hit the heart button. I don't know. Maybe you shouldn't do that. <laughs> but I mean, like we all have, right? We've, been, we've, we've all been led astray in some area in our life. That's why we have to be people of the word. We have to, we have to get in the word and we have, to, we have to listen to God through the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Jesus said that it was to, his, uh, to our advantage in John 16, 17. He said that it was to the disciples' advantage that he leave them. We talked about this a couple of years ago. Who in their right mind would say that it would be an advantage that Jesus in the flesh would go away from them? Like, no, I don't think so. But he says it's to their advantage because if he doesn't, he can't give us the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can't come. Even Jesus saw the advantage of something better than his physical presence with the disciples. Isn't it? If Jesus thinks it's an advantage, holy cow, <laughs> that's amazing. So here is what I want you to work on this week. Are you ready? Here's some homework. 
I want you to take this week and I want you to practice one thing. I want you to practice just being aware of the Holy Spirit's presence in your life, in your body. I want you to just practice being aware of the Holy Spirit's presence and power in your life as a born again believer. Now, I'm I'm going to clarify this. If, If you are listening right now and you're like, I have never committed my life to Christ. I have never started following Jesus. I've never claimed him or proclaimed him as a Lord of my life. If that, if that is you, let me tell you something. The only thing holding back the gift of the Holy Spirit to you is you receiving that salvation through grace by faith. The Holy Spirit can't come into a life where he's not invited. When we, accept Christ as our Lord, when we proclaim him as our King, when we, when we profess him as savior, when we accept his free gift of salvation and we decide to follow him as his disciples, that is the permission that the Holy Spirit needs to come and dwell in our lives. And let me tell you something, if that's you right now and you're like, dude, that's me. I want the Holy Spirit. I want this life with Christ. I'm a sinner. And here's the deal. The reason Jesus came is because we are all sinners. We're all broken people in a broken world. And there's death and murder and destruction. There are thoughts of envy and greed and jealousy. There's lying and lust. And they all live in us, don't they? We know this. And Jesus comes to set us free from that. He comes to pay the price, the penalty, so that we can escape the wrath of God. So Jesus takes our place on the cross. Because let me tell you something. Injustice will not be tolerated in the kingdom. God brought justice on sin through Jesus. And he is our portion. And so if that's you today, if that's what, if, if, if you want forgiveness of sin, all you need to do is say, God, save me. The Bible says that all those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You can click on the link below. You can go to www.theelement.cc backslash salvation. You can click on that. Click on our next steps. We want to get in touch with you, but do it now. There's a link there. It says, I commit my life to Jesus. It's a little hand. If you're looking on church online, hit it right there and fill out the form that's next to that. Because because let me tell you something. It's not just about hitting that thing going, well, I did it. No, no, no. This is a journey. This is where things begin for you. So I want you to take this week and I want you to be aware of the Holy Spirit's presence in your life. You may need to remind your mind, you need to remind your mind that because you were born again, you were gifted the Holy Spirit. You might need to remind yourself that because you have proclaimed Christ as your Savior and you've accepted the free gift of salvation, that the Holy Spirit lives in you regardless of what your brain thinks about it. See, our brains aren't conditioned yet. Some of our brains are not conditioned yet because we've we've avoided the subject of the Holy Ghost. And so when you get anxiety or when you get fearful, when, 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 you, when, you're, when you're tempted to sin, whether to look at porn or to cheat on your spouse or, or, or to lie on your taxes or just to lie to somebody or to eat that 15th cupcake that you know you shouldn't have. <laughs> I mean, when you get tempted, when you get angry, when you find yourself lonely, remind yourself that the third person of the Trinity, the living presence and power of God lives inside of you. And listen. Listen, listen to him. Put your hand right here and just say, Holy Spirit, speak to me. Holy Spirit, speak to me. I want you to do that. That's your homework. Now, here's a couple of just talking points and then we're going to take communion. Here's the thing. We always say this. What is God saying and what are you going to do about it? What is God saying to you right now? And maybe what you need to do is you need to pause this video, right? Maybe you need to pause and you just need to sit there and be quiet and just, and just ask the Lord, God, what are you saying to me? What are you saying to me? Maybe you're not even born again. And, 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 and I, would, I would challenge you, put your hand right here on your heart and just say, God, speak to me. And I'm going to tell you something, if, if you're not born again, I, I'm telling you, God is going to beckon you to himself. He's going to ask you. He's going he's to invite you to do life with him. Go for it. <laughs> Some of us here, you are dealing with sin and darkness and God is probably going to gently convict you of those things. He's going to remind you of those gaps in your life that need to be filled up with his grace, mercy, forgiveness, and love. And, and, and he does that not to, not to destroy you, but he does that because he loves you. For some of us, he is talking to you right now and he's talking about next steps. 
For some of you, you have been born again for a long time, but you've never gone public with your faith. You've never decided, God, I'm going to get, I, I'm going to identify myself with the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus through the waters of baptism. And so, God, you know, God, what are you saying? And you got to ask yourself, what am I going to do about that? Here's another one that you need to probably talk about with some friends. Who do you need to pray for today? You know, I don't know if you have that little My Five card. We had a My Five card that we gave out uh, a few months ago, and it had five people to pray for. Who do you need to pray for today? Who do you need to bless today? Who do you need to be a blessing to today? Think about that. Talk about that. What are, uh, here's another one. What was something that you learned today that was new? You know, there's nothing wrong with just looking at what, man, I didn't know that, <laughs> you know, and maybe none of this was new and that's great. That's awesome. But maybe for some of us, it was like, man, I didn't know that Pentecost meant, I didn't know that Penta meant 50. That's, that's interesting. Talk about that. What did you find fascinating about when the Holy Spirit came in Acts 2, 1 through 8? There's a lot here. How do you plan on showing Christ to others this week? All these things. So I'm going to post to all these right after the video. They're going to be on a slide right at the end. You can look at them. We'll try to post them in the comments as well. With that being said, I want us to take communion together today. Amen? Oh, gosh, I miss you guys. I miss you. I'm going to give you a hug. Ready? Oh, that's a good hug. Uh, I miss you. I miss taking communion. Um, I miss all the, 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 the love and, and just the care. Sorry, I was getting <laughs> people are texting me. Maybe they miss me too. Um, but I, I want us to read a scripture. It's in Mark 14, Mark 14, 22 through 26. It says that as they were eating, he took bread and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to them and said, take, this is my body. And he took the cup. And when he had given the thanks, he gave it to them and they drank of it. And 24, he says, and he said to them, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly, I say to you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And I love 26. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Isn't that awesome? They took communion and maybe you have some bread with you or cracker with you today. And maybe you have some juice or some water or whatever. And, and, and right now, can we just say a prayer over those things? Maybe you just want to hold those things in your hand for a moment. Or if you've already taken it, that's fine. That's all right. But maybe, maybe let's just say a prayer. God, we thank you right now for this, for this element that, that represents your body, that was broken for us, that was given for us. We thank you for this element of water or juice or wine that, that, that represents your blood that was spilled out for us. And God, as we take both, we acknowledge that you died for our sins to set us free from darkness, to give us life everlasting. And we're so thankful. Never let us forget about the mercy and the love and the forgiveness of the cross. And we partake with joy in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, and I love it. And they sang a song and then they went out. You know, maybe as you turn this video off um, or maybe as you go about your day today, maybe you need to sing a song. Maybe you should sing a song to the Lord and just give him thanks. I love you guys so much. I hope you're gathering in groups. Um, we'll be doing this all the way through June. I hope you're gathering in small groups. Reach out to us. We'll help you get in touch with other people. Reach out to your own tribe, man. Reach out to people that you know. Gather in groups and let's continue to be the church. I love you. Have a great day. so glad that you tuned in with us today. Thank you again. If you need anything, please email us at hello at theelement.cc or you can find our website at theelement.cc or you can find us on Facebook and Instagram. But please, please, please reach out. Don't do life alone. We're here for you no matter what it is. So reach out and you guys take care and we'll see you soon.